Hi there, I'm Shalini Pasponetti. I'm a program manager with Azure Sentinel. Hi, my name is Ian Helen. I'm a developer at Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center, uh, also part of Azure Sentinel. And today we're going to be talking about how developers can integrate with Microsoft Security Services. Microsoft provides an extensible platform for developers, uh, ISVs, enterprises, and others to easily integrate with our security services. You can leverage our vast number of cloud customers to target your applications, whether that's in identity, email, or data. You can accelerate and simplify application development by using our various security APIs. And you can leverage the speed and cloud of the Microsoft Cloud to easily analyze vast amounts of data for security analytics. One such product is Azure Sentinel, which is our cloud native SIM that also provides automation and orchestration capabilities. Azure Sentinel provides an extensible platform that enables customers to easily incorporate various logs from Microsoft services as well as logs from third-party services. With the logs, they can build various integrations such as dashboards that provide visibility on the logs that are ingested into Azure Sentinel. They can uh, bring in their custom threat intelligence feeds so that customers can write correlation rules uh, against the logs that are ingested with the IOC um, um, from the TI feeds as well as bring your own uh, ML models to contribute to the detections in Azure Sentinel. Lastly, we're bring, uh, building a security community that brings together customers, partners, and our own internal Microsoft SMEs that customers can use to, um, to uh, consume content such as dashboards and hunting queries and others to uh, easily ramp up on Azure Sentinel. Let's talk about how you can contribute to the automation and orchestration platform in Azure Sentinel. This is a feature that's built on Azure Logic Apps. Azure Logic Apps has an ecosystem of more than 200 partners that customers can leverage to easily integrate um, to, to build playbooks. Uh, an example is creating a ticket in ServiceNow when the alert is generated in Azure Sentinel. You can also send a text message or uh, an email to get an approval before an action uh, is executed, such as disabling the user or blocking the IP uh, on your firewall. Let's walk through an example playbook in Azure Sentinel. In this playbook, when the alert is triggered, we are using the ServiceNow connector to create an incident in that platform. We're also passing on the alert attributes as well as the severity and the description of that alert so the analyst has appropriate context when they're investigating it. Then we're posting a message in the Teams channel which also has some context. Um, we can also then send an approval email. In this case, we're asking the manager how you would like the alert to be investigated. Do you want to block the user and the IP? or simply just ignore this alert as a false positive. If the uh, manager chooses on the block user and IP option, we would execute this workflow on the left where we are using the Azure AD connector to um, block the user, meaning change it to disabled status, and we're connecting to our uh, Palo Alto to make a configuration change, in this case, add the IP in our policy rules. Uh, there's various uh, connectors in uh, Logic Apps, but developers can also contribute uh, to this ecosystem that customers can use. Let's take a look at this, uh, how a customer would use this playbook in Azure Sentinel. Here we are in the Azure Sentinel uh, portal. And this is my cases page. And here I have an option to investigate or view full details. When I click on view full details, I can see the alert attributes, and then I have an option to view playbooks. And here are some of the custom playbooks that we've built using Azure Logic Apps. Things like open a message in ServiceNow or open a ticket in Jira, uh, get uh, a IPU uh, reputation or uh, shut down the machine using the Windows Defender connector. In this case, I'm going to trigger uh, one of these I'm going to go ahead and say I want to block the IP and create a ticket in ServiceNow. Then I can go to my playbooks in Azure Sentinel. 
and I can see a run history. So here in this case, I've run this previously. So let's take a look of how this was executed. You can see that a message was posted in ServiceNow, and you can see the description that was posted. And then we scroll down to see what else has happened. We've then posted a message in Teams, and I can see the message that was posted there. And then an approval email was sent, and uh, the option selected was block the user, and therefore the condition was met, and we were then able to connect to Azure AD uh, and uh, block the user. So that's an example of a simple playbook that we built using Azure Logic Apps that developers can contribute to um, in, into Azure Sentinel. Now my colleague Ian Helen is going to show you another example of integration opportunity in Azure Sentinel with Azure Notebooks. Thanks, Shalini. Um, so now we're going to be looking at Jupyter Notebooks um, and its integration with Microsoft Graph Security API and Azure Sentinel. This is something um, that may be more of interest to a security analyst or an investigator or a hunter. Um, and there are two questions that usually, when I, if I ever bring up Jupyter Notebooks, that people ask. The first one is, what is a Jupyter Notebook? People have heard of the term often, but, uh, but may not know what it is. So I thought I'd start with a little bit of introduction about the what and the why. So you can think of uh, Jupyter as like a very clever kind of web server. Um, it's a browser interface that allows you to enter and execute code and queries, and it sends the results back to you. So there are two parts to it. There's the part you see right now, which is the browser interface. And you can see cells like this, which are edit cells. Um, and you ex execute a cell, and it will send the results, send the requests off to the, what's known as a kernel, which could be running on your own machine, or in this case, in Azure Notebooks, it's running on a cloud server. And that will calculate the results, do whatever processing you've asked it to, and uh, send the results back. You can add uh, further cells and do whatever kinds of things you want. Presumably, something a bit more bit more interesting than the code examples I've got there. So why Jupyter? So we've seen uh, in um, what Shalini showed us some very impressive bits of UI. There are other things, uh, dashboards that have very rich kind of visualization and uh, query capability in Azure Central and other products. Why would you think of using Jupyter in addition to or as a complement to these things? So the first thing I think is, um, uh, the combination of data persistence, repeatability, and backtracking that you get with Jupyter. So, uh, for example, the, the, uh, the first cell I ran, my spams will be there forever. Or they'll be there at least until I go back and manually erase them. So, in the case of a security investigation, that's typically what you want to do. You want to uh, be building up queries, evidence, um, moving on to the next thing and keeping them there. So, at the end of uh, the whole thing, you have a an investigation report. If it turns out successful, it might be something you want to save as a PDF or just hand the notebook to somebody else to, uh, to look at or maybe uh, to replicate the results. Um, you can also uh, take the same notebook and run it again. So you might want to, for different types of data, so I might want to do green eggs and spam. And you know, I can run the same set of operations I've done, a bit more interesting than these, but you can run the same set of operations on a different set of IP addresses and reuse the kind of notebook logic that you've built. So we've seen that as a second advantage, the programmability. So often you can do very complex things in a query, but sometimes, um, sometimes it's just easier to do things in a step-by-step, -step, like break the query down, do a little bit in a cell, see what the intermediate results are, and move on to the next step. Uh, third thing is the ability to join data. So al although you have lots and lots of different variety of data logs, alerts, things like that in, in the uh, Graph Security API and in Sentinel, um, there are many cases where you want external data. So this could be um, some data on a local text file. It could be on-premises um, door entry logs um, or third-party like threat intelligence. Anything that's kind of on a network somewhere is essentially acce accessible from uh, Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and the final positive thing I think is the uh, 
access to a huge ecosystem of either Python or other programming libraries that bring you things like advanced visualization capabilities, the ability to use machine learning, deep learning, or just uh, uh, st statistical packages and all sorts of data manipulation. So, so we've done the what and the why. Let's look at the, some of these things in a bit more, uh, bit more detail. So I'm going to go through executing a few cells. First, you want to check that we've initialized, we've imported the libraries we, we're going to use. The next two steps, we're going to authenticate. Because we're looking at both the Graph Security API and Azure Sentinel. Currently, we need to authenticate separately to both of them, which we've just done. And let's look at um, getting alerts from, from the Graph Security API. So let's have a look at a query of the Microsoft Graph Security API. It uses a, a, a web data query language called OData. Um, and in here, we have a very simple query that specifies a set of fields that we want to query. Uh, and a filter condition. So we want just the alerts that are high severity. So we can execute that query. And after a couple of seconds, it will come back with a set of, set of alerts of different types. Uh, you can also see that the providers of these alerts come from different providers that are hooked into uh, our uh, graph security API. So Palo Alto, Azure Security Center, Windows Defender AT, ATP. Um, and one of the nice things, once we've got them back in, into a Jupyter Notebook, these are returned as, into things called a, a pandas data frame, which allows you to do like a interesting local manipulation. So here we're grouping the alerts by title, first of all, and then plotting the output. Um, secondly, we're grouping them by the provider, so we can see the breakdown of different alerts by, by provider. And uh, let's look at another couple of quick examples here. So the first one is um, drilling down into like deeper details of the, we're just pulling out at a single property here of one of the alerts where it shows the details of a, of a particular network connection. And here is a more specific query. So, so, so an example of something you might want to look at. Um, so you had an alert for a particular host as this case, you might want to find any alerts that's happened on that host. Or you might want to look for an IP address or a, f a file hash or a file name. Um, and you can search across all of the alerts in, in uh, your graph, in your graph tenant, to see whether any of these things occur with this kind of re relatively simple uh, syntax. So switching over to Azure Sentinel, the reason um, Azure Sentinel exists really, as uh, Shalini said, it's a, a, a cloud sim. It allows you to go from, once you have an alert, one of, the, one of the main things is you want to do is to be able to drill down in more detail and uh, to try to identify whether this is a, a real attack, a real intrusion, or a fa false positive. So we're going to get an alert from Azure Sentinel. This is for demo purposes, really. I'm doing it separately, but uh, in a real situation, you'd, you'd probably get the alert from uh, the Graph Security API um, and then drill down into the corresponding data in Sentinel. So we take our, our alert. It's appeared there. These are all live queries, by the way. Um, we can see all the, the properties, including entities like hosts and processes that are related to that alert. We can also visualize it. I, I kind of like the, it's a bit of a busy thing, but for a quick view of like which processes are associated with this alert, which hosts, that's sometimes like a, a nicer way to view these things. It doesn't tell us any more really about whether this is a, a real alert that we want to act on or just a false positive. For that, we, we need to look at the context in which the, uh, the process this alert happened. So we can do that by looking at um, the whole process session. So the logon session and the process tree um, with which this uh, alert was associated. Once we do that, we can start to see the, uh, 
The process in the alert is the one highlighted in red, approximately in the middle of the screen. But you can see other associated items within the tree. So these are all sibling processes, things that had a common parent process. They're all run as part of the same, the same logon session. And we can see other things in here like who am I, host name, like, like classic reconnaissance uh, kinds of operations, admin, um, enumeration of the local administrators group. Um, and somewhere down here, something being added to the run key, uh, like a persistence so that uh, a piece of malware being added there so that next time the machine is re rebooted, um, the malware comes back. We can look at an alternative view uh, on a timeline. Um, and these show you the different, exactly the same processes, but uh, in a time, or, uh, time ordering. So one of the interesting things here, you could see at a glance, the whole thing happens over the case of slightly over a second. So these either are very, very fast typer, or this is a scripted attack of some sort. Quick look at another capability. We can take this whole process tree and we can look for other indicators of compromise that we might, uh, like things like file hashes, IP addresses that occurred on the command lines of processes. So we pass that whole process three, tree through a, um, a library module that we have as part of our Azure Sentinel. And we can see there we've got um, a DNS and uh, the URL that was, that was called in one of these processes. So let's hop outside the machine and quickly look at the network traffic. We've got the IP address of the machine that the alert occurred on. And we want to go away and look at, well, what was happening? What was it talking to? Who was it talking to? And what kinds of protocols was it using? We're getting quite a lot of data here, so it takes a little bit of time to appear. And this is one of the nice things about Jupyter Notebooks. I talked about visualization before. And sometimes when you have lots and lots of data, it's really helpful to have a, a kind of view of things so you can pick out things that, uh, may, that may, in a, in a long, long list of data, very difficult to see anomalous things, but uh, presented in the right way, you can pick things out. So this is a Windows host. And a couple of things we'd notice immediately the whole thing is dominated by HTTPS traffic and some HTTP. But there's some odd things here, like an SSH outbound. So the things on the, uh, the right-hand side are uh, inbound flows. The things on the left-hand side, outbound flows. So we get SSH, which is like a very common in the Linux world, pretty rare in the, in the Windows world. So to see both inbound and outbound traffic there, something kind of very odd. We can also see after the, uh, the alert happened, this kind of increase in clear text HTTP traffic, which is, again, something we might want to investigate. It's something that uh, is sort of an unusual. It may indicate that the uh, attacker malware was talking back to its uh, command and control center uh, using a, you know, a, an unprotected um, protocol. So summary, we've looked at. Um, Jupyter Notebooks and how they might use the Graph Security API to query um, different kinds of operations and alerts across uh, many different security services. Uh, we looked at uh, Azure Sentinel and how the query I API here uh, allows you to drill down more deeply on what, what happened, what was behind these alerts. And at Jupyter Notebooks as a kind of synthesis technology to bring these thing things together into a single kind of replayable document.